And uh, to start the meeting, we're going to have a, uh, I guess we have a quorum. We have some new members, which we'll talk with in a few minutes. We're going to have a moment of silence and then our Pledge of Allegiance. So let's let's have a moment of silence, for, please. Okay, thank you. And now uh, it's time for our Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One, one nation. One nation, God, under God, invisible, liberty. liberty and justice for all. Okay, so uh, we, we do have some new board members and I'd like them to, uh, to introduce themselves. I, I've talked a little bit with Ted and Steve and I think we have a third also. I don't know if you're with us yet. But, Laurel Barton's in here too. Hi Laurel. Okay, so uh, uh, let's just start with Ted, uh, please. And if you'd introduce yourself and give us a, a little overview of yourself, that'd be great for all participants. Well, my name is Ted Shady. Um, I have been a resident of Morro Bay for about six years. Um, my background is uh, engineering. I'm a, a civil engineer. I've got two civil engineering degrees, uh, uh, degrees in uh uh, environmental engineering and coastal engineering um, for uh, the 90 or for the 80s from 1980 to 1990 I was a city engineer and, and a public works engineer in Orange County and a couple of cities in Orange County in 1990 um, I moved to the Owens Valley Bishop in the Owens Valley and uh, for 25 years I was the air pollution control officer I was executive officer of a, a, a air pollution control district local government agency um, I was, I conducted dust research. I'm a dust expert and um, I tried to figure out how to fix uh, windblown dust from dry lake beds in the area. Oh yeah, right. Mm. I, uh, I retired in uh, 2015 and uh, moved to Morro Bay and have been happily uh, living here ever since. Neat, very interesting. What is the name of the air pollution control district there? It's called the Great Basin Air Pollution Control District. It's uh, actually a three-county district, Inyo, Mono, and Alpine counties. So Very uh, interesting. Pretty large area. Yeah, thank you. Great. Welcome aboard. Okay, let's see. Steve, I know, is also with us. Go ahead, Steve. Hi. So uh, my background, I'm an electrical engineer by schooling, uh, worked 39 years in the aerospace business with Rockwell and Boeing on both military and commercial jets. Uh, from high school on, I've been uh, a road and highway junkie and, um, and have uh, served a four-year term on the city of Bellevue, Washington Transportation Commission, which I really enjoyed. Uh, I, I volunteered for, for this committee uh, partly because I really enjoyed get, uh, understanding the infrastructure of a city uh, and hopefully I can help uh, help uh, guide guide the wheels of progress to to the betterment of the city. Great. Well, welcome aboard, and thank you. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to say hello to, of course, to John. And I see Ian is also online. Hello, Ian. Hey, how's it going? Good. Okay, so let's move on. Um, if there's any other announcements that the, the board members would like to make. Excuse uh, me, Doug. Yes? This is the name. We have one other new board member, Laurel Barton. Uh, I see. Forgive me. As well. Okay. I know Laurel's on the city council. Laurel's our, sorry, Jean. Laurel's our council member. Uh, sorry yeah. for the confusion. We I think we have another member who's probably just not on yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Her, her name is Lori Beal. Yeah. Sorry about that confusion. It's okay. No, no. okay hold. Same initials. We're pleased. Um, Laurel, would you like to say something briefly to introduce yourself to the new members? 
Oh, I, I'll just say hello from here in the in the shadows. Um, I'm sort of a public works junkie as well. I spent many years working with uh, engineers in cities and doing a lot of grant writing to get projects to happen. So that's that's my interest. Okay, I, I wasn't clear. I, I know Jeff Heller was our liaison last year, so this this is an annual thing where we have a, a different city council member as our liaison, right? And I yeah, but I'm not sure I'm your liaison. I'm just here because I was oh. interested. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to confuse everybody. No, that's okay. <laughs> putting everybody to the test right now. Yeah. No, we're, we're happy to have you participate. I believe uh, Red Davis is. Uh, there are our lives on and he's yes. also attending somehow i think i don't think he's online though okay great okay yeah Let's he's see. on the, he's as an attendee um and, and somehow uh, laurel got promoted to panelists so that, that happens sometimes agp is just trying to keep up with everything so great okay so um let's see i think i guess the next issue is p potential public comments and I would have to ask the, um, the video people if there's anybody online who wants to make a comment. Yes, just a moment. We have Red Davis, Robert Red Davis, and I'll uh -huh. allow him to talk. You are live, sir. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say hello to and I want to welcome our new members. Uh, Lori Beale, Steve Francis, and Ted Shady. Uh, gosh, it seems as if we just interviewed you a couple of days ago, and here you are already. So thank you for being so eager and jumping into the fray. And uh, I want to uh, also welcome Greg Pollock, our new Public Works Director. Appreciate you being on board, Greg. Um, and I think that Scott will tell you that I have high expectations so uh, and again i want to remind you all that uh, what you do is important to city council and the recommendations that you forward to the council for our consideration we take seriously and uh, we appreciate very much your public service so thank you and I'm going to leave you now, but I'm going to record the meeting and play it back later. So good night, everyone, and have fun. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, uh, let's see. Is there any other uh, public comment? No, sir, not at this time. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, move our agenda. And uh, I, I guess the next... The next item is the review of the minutes from last month and uh, approval. And um, I don't know if uh, anybody has any um, comments or amendments to the minutes from last month. It's, it's attached. Okay, uh, hearing no change. Yes? Okay, hearing no change, I would request a, a, um, a motion to approve the minutes from last month. I'll, I'll move that we approve the meetings next month, for the last month. <laughs> Good, anyone I'll, to second? Okay. I'll, I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the minutes are approved. <laughs> so that's great. Okay, so, um, Let's see. And now we have uh, uh, business items, which of course uh, is the uh, uh, the director's report, a summary of current public works activities. So I would welcome um, our new director and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. And I'll just uh, give a brief introduction to myself. Uh, today is my, is my eighth day here at the city. Uh, so I'm still quite new. Um, I come by way of the city of Pasadena and before that in La Cunada Flint Ridge uh, in Los Angeles County where I worked in public works and also with maintenance programs. Um, and I have a career before that in local government and nonprofit as well. 
Um, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, part of my 100-day plan is to basically meet everyone in the city and meet everyone on the Public Works team. We have a staff of over 30, uh, and I've already begun that. I've met a lot of folks, and uh, I've been really impressed with, with the dedication of the Public Works team. Um, I'm going to continue to do that and then also start reaching out to folks in the community, uh, including uh, members of this board. So um, you, you, you may see me uh, reach out to you uh, for that reason. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say personally. I'm going to kick it off to my team, but um, well, just one kind of idea I want to throw out there is that uh, in this first 100 days, I'm going to be gathering a lot of input about the department. Uh, if there's ways that we can improve or be more efficient, um, I'm not sure, but it's it's something I'll be looking at. Uh, a piece of that is I'd like to take a look at the, the role of this uh, body, of, of this advisory board. And you know, obviously the decision is not mine, but uh, I think it may be worth a conversation to have uh, with, with this body, uh, particularly since there are several new members that are a part of it. Um, and what I would like to do uh, in a few months is to put in a discussion item on, on one of our agendas um, for, for you all to discuss exactly this point. Um, and it may mean that you all decide that there won't be any changes or maybe there's some suggestions that uh, you would like to implement and obviously it would have to be approved by the city council as well. But I just want to give you all a heads up uh, that that's something that I would like to at least put on the agenda uh, for a future meeting. So, you know, if you have any ideas, uh, it's, a good, it's a good time to start thinking them through. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm very pleased uh, to present the director's report. We'll do sort of a round robin, um, and we can go in the order of uh, the presentation that's here. Now, we do have a bit of a meteor agenda this evening. Uh, we have a couple other items besides this. So. Uh, I've asked the public works staff to just give, you know, one or two or three highlights um, from their division. And, uh, you know, if there's any questions, of course, uh, from any of the board members, we'd, we'd be happy to take them. But with that being said, I'll kick it off to Matt Bishop, who's uh, over consolidated maintenance. Great, Matt. Go ahead. Great. All right. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to all the new members. Uh, I guess I can start out here on page four of the agenda package, which is uh, trees and vegetation. Real quickly, and uh, Tamaris will touch more on this, I imagine. But uh, we, you know, our maintenance division did plant four Monterey cypress trees recently at the Del Mar Park. And uh, down to streets here, there's a total of 16 more tons since the last time we met that went into the streets of Morro Bay, uh, 16 tons of asphalt. A hot mix asphalt right there on the right hand side you can see a before and after shot of the repairs made on the 700 block of piney way so moving on to the next subject of uh we're, we're just going to go miscellaneous on the uh the restriping we've restriped a lot of parking lots uh from the cloisters to bayshore bluffs community center and along the olive street to bayshore drive route and then we're, we're going to flip the page over to page six, and you can see the top right corner. We've installed a, a two new tennis court uh, nets over there in Monty Young, and also uh, two at the, at the Del Mar Park as well. Uh, that's it for me. If anybody's got any questions, let me know. Oh, one more thing. If we can flip the page, I do want to make mention. This is a big one that we're, we are currently involved with, with the maintenance division. On page seven, uh, the vets all, uh, the, our maintenance division removed 96 solar panels. Uh, we, we removed the panels, all the mounts, anchors, and electrical off the roof for a re-roof project with a local contractor. And they are... They'll be wrapped up this Friday, so about 95% of it is complete. So it's turning out really nice. That's great. That's great. Thanks, Matt, for that. Um, I just want to call out and acknowledge, I'm not sure if you saw, Vice Chair Rogers, that uh, Lori Beal did enter the meeting. Uh, she's one of our new advisory board members. Okay, good. Uh, can we just take a quick break and, and welcome Lori and ask her to give us uh, just a quick... Uh, Introduction for herself, please. 
Hardest part of every meeting is finding the unmute button. Um, I I am a, in my other non-volunteer job. I'm a, a federal employee. I work for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So I've been working remotely for quite a while, and still have to always find that mute button every time. But. Um, as a, a Morro Bay resident, I was just really interested in opportunities to volunteer and noticed that um, there were several extensions for the advisory board, uh, public works um, advisory board uh, position. So I decided to go ahead and apply for that. Um, in my, again, job job, I'm a, an attorney and I review a lot of um, projects for um, environmental effects and effects to marine species. Um, and I have um, in that capacity and from that angle reviewed, I've reviewed a lot of public works projects, um, particularly if there's like a federal nexus, for example, wastewater or EPA. Um, anyway, I just find it really interesting. Um, again, looking for an opportunity to volunteer and hoping that um, I have some skills that um, could, could be of use. So thank you very much. And I, I do apologize, I was having a little problems um, getting into the proper site, but I'll have that all straightened out for next time. So thank you. Welcome, Lori. And uh, hopefully you'll meet a, a red-legged frog here in the near future. I would love to. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to, uh, to Greg and his team. I'm sorry. <clears throat> thank you, Vice Chair Rogers. Uh, up next is Janine. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I just have a couple of items to go over with. First is that the 2021 trolley season is slated to start Memorial Day weekend in about a week and a half. And we are again gonna be doing kind of a condensed version of the routing. We're gonna have two routes, a north route and the downtown route that will be going from the campgrounds in the north and the south end of the community, bringing people into the downtown and the waterfront area. And that will be running on Saturdays and Sundays from 10 to five each of those days. And the season will run through the first weekend in October. And then the second item is that, uh, just a, a note that the, TSA has extended their mask order or their mask requirement that was set to expire on May 11th and they have extended that through September 13th and this we, we had the CDC who recently updated their uh, guidance with regard to fully vaccinated individuals um, however that still applies face mask still replies to the transportation industry. So transit riders still need to wear masks on the vehicles uh, at all times. So with that, that's the only two things I wanted to highlight for this month. And if anyone has any questions, I'm here to answer. Thanks, Janine. We'll move right along to Damaris. Hi, good evening. Um, I just have a couple of highlights. I'll start on page seven with street trees. I uh, just want to thank the um, World Bay Daisy Troop who helped plant trees um, in honor of the Earth Day. Um, we planted four um, trees along Quintana kind of near uh, McDonald's. And then also the city planted four uh, Monterey Cypress too throughout the parks. Um, and then just want to remind everyone that it is nesting season. There's no trimming or removing of trees until um, nesting season ends, which is the end of June. Um, the next page is the stormwater page, page eight. Um, just wanna highlight really quick that the Central Coast Clean campaign, the anti-litter campaign, um, that we won an award and we have now reached a million impressions. Um, and then the third one, the page nine, water conservation. We're gonna be going over a little more water conservation in a little bit later, so I'll save my highlights for there. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Thank you, and we'll move to Joe. Good evening, board members and new board members. Joe Miller, Utilities Division Manager. A uh, few highlights for, uh, for April. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, the conveyance contractor got off to somewhat of a rocky start. Uh, the first day they started digging in the street, they uh, wound up breaking, breaking uh, 
a water main, so uh, that's highlighted in the report. So city crews uh, responded out and uh, were able to assist the contractor and, and fix that six inch water main that they hit. And at the same time, they actually, uh, you know, a different part of their crew actually hit an above ground sewer line. So all in the same day, little rocky start, but uh, sewer crews were able to respond uh, capture the majority of the uh, the sewage spill and redirect it back into the sewer system and uh, provide a cleanup. So no sewage actually made it to the bay. So uh, that's a good thing. Uh, thanks uh, to the quick actions of our staff. And we did notify all the regulatory agencies of this event. Uh, other uh, activities in the water department uh, we did have our main booster station that fills the Vachon tanks on the north side of town uh, go down. It actually had an electrical problem where the, uh, the old electrical panel actually uh, short-circuited and uh, completely uh, blew up. So uh, to say it uh, very, very uneloquently, but uh, so the whole ha panel had to be replaced. Uh, uh, water operators were able to uh, redirect flows through uh, through a bypass line and, and keep those tanks uh, at an operational level while they replaced an electrical panel. So the systems uh, within 24 hours was fully back in service. You can also see on the uh, one of the pictures, uh, I want to highlight the number of testing that, that actually is done by our staff. Uh, all those bottles, uh, Basically, on that one table is just one daily sample event. Uh, it was a quarterly sample event, but uh, we've been doing a lot of these for the new treatment facility, and uh, it's a very large effort, and John Gunderluck and Amy Mills heads that up, and uh, uh, just wanted to give them kudos for keeping that on track. Uh, I mean, it's a large effort to take all these samples all the time and uh, follow all the testing protocols. And to conclude, uh, activities in the uh, wastewater treatment plant itself, uh, as a lot of you know, it's a very old aging treatment plant. That's why we're building a new one. Uh, our chlorine storage tank uh, actually wound up uh, experiencing a leak. Uh, lucky for us, that storage tank is actually provided by the chemical provider, so at no cost to the city. So uh, it was a disruption for our staff to uh, redirect chemical flows and maintain uh, disinfection, but uh, we're able to coordinate with the staff and uh, the chemical supplier is replacing that tank. So uh, that tank is uh, double contained, so no chlorine actually made it out onto the surface. So uh, quick action of our staff, we were able to identify the leak, uh, make sure it stayed contained in there, contact the chemical supplier, and we we're able to get a new tank on site. So uh, that concludes uh, my reports, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Joe. And last but not least, we'll move to Rob. And if there's any questions after Rob, we'll be happy to take them then. It's all yours, Rob. Thanks, Greg. Um, um, Mr. Vice Chair, board members, Bob Leibig, city engineer, um, probably the biggest thing to report is um, we've uh, executed a contract with a local civil engineering firm to provide us some assistance here and getting um, some plans and specs prepped for some of our capital projects. They're starting with the, um, the pavement management work uh, that we'll be doing uh, um, this year, moving on to the um, um, police station and then helping us with some exhibits for um, uh, the grant application for the Coleman restroom. Um, we have um, in-house received plans for the rehabilitation of the Blanca and King's tanks, um, doing the final review on those. Expect to get uh, that project uh, um, out to the streets within um, a week or so and uh, met with our design consultant 
on um, the um, collection system repairs. They're hoping to get us a 90% set of plans um, uh, by the end of the week um, so that we can remain on schedule for that work. Um, as Joe mentioned, the WERF project is um, being um, um, constructed on almost all fronts at this point in time. Um, we have lift station, pump station A being worked on on Atascadero Road, pump station B at Quintana in Maine and, uh, next to Lemos. We have pipelines being installed in the section of Quintana between Maine and the roundabout. Um, as probably most people have experienced uh, our traffic control that we have in place. And then also pipelines being installed um, on the lower section of Quintana between La Loma and South Bay Boulevard. Um, we also are continuing our development review activities. Almost every day we get a new um, small or medium-sized project in to review. That concludes my um, presentation. Thank you, Rob, and that concludes the director's report. So if there's any questions for me or the public works team, we'd be happy to take that. I have a question. I, a question. Um, I, I met one of the Cor Corolla quality fellows at the um, parking lot at Albertsons one day after work. <laughs> And I was asking him how things were going from his perspective. And the comment that I heard was that uh, Anvil is kind of short, short staff yeah, and they, they could use more, more people, people to remain, remain on, on schedule. schedule. And, and I'm just, just kind of curious, curious. Look, look, looking at the PERC chart, what, what, Rob, what do you think about that? I mean, how are those guys doing? Um, they've, they've struggled with getting skilled labor to um, um, staff this project. I think uh -huh. that is an industry-wide um, issue, um, uh, getting st skilled operators um, and laborers to um, work on this job. They have brought down from their uh, headquarters area up in the Bay Area some additional staffing to um, um, assist with the, the project. Um, and then they have some um, local local hires that they've done and some local subcontractors on the job. So I think um, each week they're improving their abilities. Um, they have a very um, seasoned um, field superintendent now that has um, kind of taken this bull by the horns and is, uh, uh, I believe, will be driving it home. Great. I've already mixed my metaphors there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's good to hear because, uh, you know, I've been kind of concerned about it. And I, I see what the, the schedule is, the pipeline, the conveyance system is going to be done in the first quarter of next year, according to the schedule. Is that about, do you think that's still possible? They've extended their work hours. Uh, they're now working 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So they should be able to, they believe they'll be able to deliver the project um, on schedule and meet the needs of the um, supplying um, wastewater to the wastewater treatment plant for so that project can um, um, complete also. Good news, thank you. Okay, so that is our director's report and thank you for all the staff. Let's see here, let's go back up and see how we're doing on our, on our, uh, on our agenda. Okay, so uh, the annual Mr. water Chair, report. Do you want to ask for public comment um, on this item? Uh, okay, I'd be happy to. Is there anyone who has a, any public comment? There is nobody in the queue with their hand raised at this time. Okay, great. Uh, Doug, I, I kind of review, like to review some of the, the responses to my comments, which I emailed in early. Yes, okay. Uh, would you let, go ahead. I, I have, that's what uh, Janine distributed to us this afternoon? That's right. Okay, would, would you like to kind of go through that briefly? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let Rick Deschler know about the uh, citywide yard sale thing. He'll have to take it up with city council or themselves. So we'll okay. see how that goes. All right. Um, 
for the citywide pedestrian plan, uh, I noticed that there are gaps in the pedestrian access along North Main. And when I look at the, the pedestrian bicycle plan, uh, basically it ignores those gaps. And I was wondering, is that planned or is that just because it's an old, it's an old pedestrian uh, bicycle citywide plan? With that, uh, Rob, is that something you'd be able to talk about? Yeah. Um, so the uh, North Main does have several sections where it's missing um, sidewalk. Um, for the most part, the way frontage improvements get installed in the city is through development and redevelopment. Um, so, or um, should we have a, um, a major um, work on Main Street will be required to, um, uh, in compliance with ADA, um, uh, make those improvements. But yes, it is part of the plan to complete sidewalk on uh, Main Street. Um, um, I don't believe the, the 2011 uh, bike and ped plan explicitly addressed um, um, sidewalk, um, uh, the gaps in the sidewalk there, but they are addressed through the um, ADA transition plan and um, um, basically the, the requirements for um, our arterial and collector streets. Okay. Um, John, are you are you happy with all the answers that uh, Janine provided to you in her response um, today? Not completely, but for the most part, I just had some questions about the pedestrian. Uh, when I put in that new transit shelter, maybe all we need to have is like next step and and end of construction dates listed on a regular basis, since that's uh, going to affect a anybody who's, who has to use a bus to get around the county. Um, so is a uh, hazardous material from Coleman restroom been removed yet or is that still uh, uh, waiting for the contractor to do the next step? Yeah, so I'll go ahead and answer that one there. And I apologize, I didn't introduce myself to the, the, the new, the members here. Uh, Matt Bishop, uh, maintenance supervisor and uh, standing uh, maintenance superintendent as well. The uh, Coleman restroom, uh, we do, we did award the uh, contract for removal of uh, demolition to a local contractor and they will be remediating the, the uh, the hazards there on the property. Is there a schedule? Well, I just received an email back that the contract is signed and fully executed. So now we just have to get them scheduled in and I would imagine within the next few weeks. Okay. Um, Police annex parking, is there a schedule for um, starting the plan preparation and, and, and what is like the goal to get it all complete? Um, talking with Eikhoff Engineering, it might make sense to um, have this as a additive alternative with the paving project, um, since we'll have a paving contractor um, uh, mobilized for the um, stopgap repairs, and um, perhaps we could take advantage of um, a larger project to get that reasonable. So. Um, we would likely put that out to bid um, right near the end of this fiscal year, um, uh, mid-June timeframe. Um, it's not a very big paving project. Um, it's not a very big lot. Um, so um, I wouldn't imagine it, take, it would take very long, but we'll be working with ICOF Engineering and developing that schedule. Okay. Um, for those who might be trying to follow what I'm doing, I'm mostly looking, starting, Coleman was on page 19 of the uh, agenda. Uh, Police annex was page 20, on um, page 21. Um, so we're just waiting on the, uh, the, the solar and, or the, the wind generation and battery storage project, it sounds like, for the uh, 
the federals have to do it, is, or is it a private? I'm surprised that the federals have anything to say about it. So on the wind project, it's, it's uh, I believe, I, I don't think they've actually awarded that lease for the um, wind turbines offshore. It's it's quite a ways off um, okay, okay. before that project is developed. The battery project is they've um, submitted their plans. Their plans are um, de planning department deemed them complete and um, um, they're, they're undergoing environmental review right now. Um, they will likely have some frontage improvements along with some likely some um, transportation improvements that they'll need to make as part of that construction. Okay. Okay. Anything else, John? Uh, hang on for a second. I got to, there we go. Uh, uh, Page 24 was, okay. okay. Uh, uh, yeah, that yeah, pretty well covers what I had on the director's report. Okay, because okay, hopefully everybody has a copy of this and the answers uh, to John's questions are, are listed here. So, okay, so let's continue with our agenda. We do have a couple of major items coming up and that would be the annual water report. And who would like to handle that? Damaris? Yes, thank you. Okay. Go ahead. All right, one second. Let me share my screen here. Okay. All right. So this evening we'll be going over the annual water report and the allocation of the fiscal year 21-22 um, water equivalency units. Um, water equivalency units or a WEU is a measurement of water use equal to the average amount of water used by a single family residence over the period of one year. The intent of the WEU allocations are to regulate the addition of new water users to the city's water system and to ensure the demand of water does not exceed available supply. A little background on the WEUs. Um, these came about because of a 1984 citizens adopted uh, Measure F, which was a growth management system, um, set, which set a maximum population of 12,200 and a maximum number of WEUs issued each year at 70, with 130% of those residential WEUs being used for commercial and industrial use. So that's 65 commercial industrial WEUs. Um, from 1977 to 2015, a WEU was equal to 10,780 cubic feet of water, which was based on the 166 gallons per capita per day. Um, in 2016, we changed that to equal 8,732 cubic feet or 90 gallons per capita per day to represent um, more current usage of water. For our current water supply, 94% um, of our water is from state water. Um, the Department of Water Resources informed the state water contractors that the allocation for the 21-22 fiscal year would be 5%. Um, but this, along with um, the city's drought buffer and storage in the San Luis Reservoir, uh, the city will be able to make up the difference and have enough water for the city's projected average demand. Um, the Morro Valley water makes up 6% of our water supply in 2020. Um, the wells in the Morro Valley are high in nitrates and they require treatment through our brackish water reverse osmosis plant um, prior to distribution. And the Morro Valley um, water rights is only eight, 581 acre feet per year. Um, the Troy Valley was 0% of our water supply in 2020. Um, we haven't used the Troy Valley wells in quite a long time. Um, these wells require stream flow to exceed 1.4 CFS um, in, order the, in order to the water be pumped. Um, they're also high in nitrates and have to be treated with the brackish water reverse osmosis plant. And the city does not currently have a pipeline to take that water to that treatment plant. Uh, water conservation, um, Morabay has continued to reduce water for the last seven years based on the 2013 base year. Um, water usage in 2020 has continued to decrease, um, but it's sort of starting to level off now since the decrease in from 2013. So drought. Um, in April, Governor Newsom signed an emergency proclamation declaring the state of emergency for Mendocino and Sonoma counties. 
um, in May 10th, um, so after your staff report was written, he expanded that proclamation to include 39 more counties. Um, San Luis Obispo is not in one of those counties at this moment. Um, that map there shows you the counties that are in, um, the orange and the yellow, orange and uh, yellow there. Um, it is anticipated because of the low snow packed and persistent dry conditions that Newsom may declare the entire state um, a state of emergency due to drought and require more stricter water conservation measures. So currently the water conservation measures in Morro Bay are for moderately restricted water supply. Um, here's a few of the um, restrictions here listed. So excessive gutter runoff is prohibited. Um, when washing your car, vehicle, boat, whatever, you have to use a handheld spring nozzle. Um, no water shall be used for hardscapes unless public health is or safety. Uh, outdoor irrigation is prohibited between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. and restaurants shall serve water only when requested by a customer. If the city was to move to severely restricted water supply, water conservation measures, um, although the previous requirements would apply along with um, some of these here, or all of these here. Um, <clears throat> when you're washing car, you have to use a bucket. Um, irrigation of private and public landscaping is only prohibited on even number of dresses on Wednesdays and Sundays, and odd number of dresses on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and also within those time frames. Um, emptying swimming pools and spas is prohibited. Um, use of public water or portable water, <laughs> portable water for compaction and dust control for construction purposes is prohibited. And all visitor serving facilities in the city shall promptly display water conservation measures to benefit and educate the visitors of the community. And these handouts or flyers or whatever they may be um, have to be provided to the owners and managers um, at the cost of the city. So water management planning, um, in November 2018, council adopted the one water planning document. Um, this planning document, um, due to restrictions on the Truro Valley, um, um, did not see it as a reliable water source for the city. Additionally, um, due to cost and the seawater desalinization is re recommended to discontinue this water supply. The water reclamation facility was determined to be more reliable, sustainable, and cost-effective water source than the other options that were analyzed in the one water plan. The new water reclamation facility will provide the city with the ability to provide up to 800 acre feet of water through indirect potable reuse or by injecting highly purified water into the Morro Valley groundwater basin and recovering that water with our existing extraction wells. <laughs> So the summary of the fiscal year 2021 WEU allocations, um, council did allocate 115 WEUs um, for development. Of those, um, 84.81 were used, um, eight for single family homes, 21.7 for multifamily and 55.11 for commercial and industrial. Um, just want to point out that when staff went to um, look at this plan again, and um, normally WEUs were being issued at building permit final. Um, after reevaluating it, it um, we have we're now issuing them at um, planning permit issuance. It was more appropriate to issue them then. So this one this year is accounting for all of the planning permit and the building permit. So that's why it's a lot more WEUs that we issued this year. For instance, in pre previous years we've issued eight, six even three WEUs. So this is a substantial amount more, but again, it's accounting for a lot more um, years in the process. Um, and plus there was commercial industrial, there was, there's a larger hotel and several smaller hotels that have been um, approved by planning this last year. So those were all included in this as well. So in conclusion, the WEU allocations and Measure F compliance, the city has yet to reach Measure F's population of 12,200, so therefore housing units can still be issued. Um, the available water supply, even though state water allotment at 5%, um, the city will still receive our projected amount for to meeting demand. And if a state of emergency is declared, um, 
which includes San Luis Obispo County, the city can move to the next tier of water conservation measures for severely stricter water supply. And Morro Bay has continued to conserve water, assisting the reduction of um, production over the last several years, making citizens making um, conservation a way of life. So in conclusion, staff recommends Public Works Advisory Board forward a recommendation to City Council to allocate 115 WEUs for the fiscal year 21-22, 50 residential units, 30 for single family, 20 for multifamily, and 65 for, for commercial and industrial. And also recommend to, to Council to implement mandatory water conservations for severely restricted water supply conditions if the governor of California declares a state of emergency, including San Luis Obispo County, due to drought. That concludes my um, presentation, and I am here for comments and along with other staff. Okay, thank you very much. Any comments? I have a quick question, Demaris. I'm curious, what's the uh, rationale for the breakdown between single and multifamily? The, the difference between the single and multifamily? Oh, I just wondered how you um, allocate between the two. Um, so I, I think I understand. So a, a single family home is one WEU, and then a multifamily is half a WEU. I think it's half, I'd have to check. But it's-, it's I think what the, the question might be is how we determine how many of each we allocate. And that's set up through the, um, the ordinance and the implementing resolutions that council has adopted. So it's kind of carved in stone. This is a formula. Okay, thank yes. you. Yeah, sorry, I didn't understand. So this is Ted, if, um, if for some reason you bump up against your residential limit, then you can't go into your commercial limit, but even though you're still under 115 for the year? Um, technically, um, that's the way it's set up is that there's 54 single family homes or for residential, yes. But we can go back to council to have the, the distribution reallocated should they choose to do that. Great, thank you. Um, a, 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 a comment and a request. Um, I've read this report with uh, much interest. Uh, I've been involved in water planning for a long time and uh, it was great. I really appreciate the work you put into it. Uh, it, was, it was fascinating. Um, my request is that you maybe next year be a little more consistent with the units that you use. I mean, they were uh, WEUs, gallons per capita per day, cubic feet per second, acre feet, millions of gallons. About the only one that I that I know that wasn't used was miners inches. Um, you know, there was just a real, it was a real hodgepodge of, you know, and I had my calculator and I was, and was going back and forth, but if we could kind of be consistent, you know, pick one and stick to it kind of a thing. Uh, uh, you know, I realized that like state water planning is usually acre feet and that doesn't mean a lot to most people, but if, uh, I think we can tighten up the discussion of the, of it a bit by using more consistent units. And that was all, but thank you. I appreciate your effort. Okay, thank you. I had a couple of uh, more comments, which the response brought up. Uh, from what I understand, we've, can we say we've never used all the allocated WEUs each year? Is that true? We never have since Rob and I have been doing this, never even come close. Um, I, I don't know that they, I think early on they may have used all of them. Um, do you know? I think in the late 80s was probably the last time. Um, that was also during the time when um, you had to perform, um, if there were no WEUs, you had to perform retrofit to um, get water equivalency units. So um, that was the uh, vintage of the five gallon per flush toilet and um, many toilets in, in town were um, uh, replaced so that a, a new subdivision could uh, acquire the WEUs that they needed. Are, once you 
allocate at WEU, is it gone forever or is it recovered if it's not used at the end of the year? They do not carry over from year to year. So, so basically go back, the capacity associated with it goes back into the, the calculation later on then? Correct. Okay. Um, one thing thoughts which popped up was so you're not supposed to use uh, portable water for uh, compaction during construction. Uh, do we have a source for water like that, for uh, recycled water? Um, we have a source for not potable water for construction. We've, we've, when, before when we were in the um, water conservation measures, um, we have a well that we have a wharf head on and we can connect to that and fill up a water tank with it. Where's that, where's that connection point? Um, near the Pippo's well. Which is well. on Park Street adjacent to Lila Kaiser Park. Okay. okay. Uh, ba -ba -bum. And then if I understand rightly, you believe that the city actually has more than an adequate water supply uh, for any requirements that we could foresee in the future. Is that right, Rob? We have adequate water supply to serve us through the um, 12,200 pop population cap. Um, without providing another source. Now, do we have uh, water resiliency? Um, not as, we're not as resilient as we could be. Um, that's one of the purposes of the, of the um, IPR project through the WERF is to provide an additional source of uh, water supply because um, state water is a, an interruptible water supply. It gets interrupted every year for a maintenance shutdown and is subject to interruptions through for um, um, catastrophic events. Um, should something happen along the aqueduct route, earthquake, um, power outages through their, for their pumping stations, um, that sort of thing, or um, as we get, um, as every year um, we have a reduction in state water, um, as Damara said, we are, um, the state is, is, is only pumping 5% of the available water supply south of the Delta um, um, for this year. And everybody is restricted to 5% um, of their allocation, including their available drought buffer. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I saw found interesting was, um, so there has been discussion of, of being able to divert water to Los Osos, is that true? Um, it's been a topic of discussion um, over the years. Um, it's never really made it too far, mainly because of the um, pipeline costs and um, water availability. So um, um, I suppose we would bring something forward if there was um, a mutually beneficial um, um, project that could be brought forward. So how long would that water line need to be? I think it's about six miles to Los Osos-ish. Um, that's what my um, bike computer tells me when I ride out that direction anyway. So so we're talking something in the neighborhood of uh, 30 or $40 million to put a pipeline in? Is that kind of like what we're talking about? Uh, perhaps um, it would be a difficult construction. construction um, as you get south of uh, um, the bridge there, you're in a lot of rock and you're right next to the bay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. I just have a quick question um, for Damaris and Rob. Um, the PERP chart, of course, says the new plant is going to come online in June of 2022. So if we're sitting here next May, 
with a reduced allegation from the state, what uh, do we have this, what are we going to do? Because the new plant really won't be online until later in 2022. And that date is for um, uh, meeting our permit compliance, basically meeting um, the, the secondary requirements to discharge the ocean. It'll take probably, Joe's going to correct me when I throw out a number that uh, date that's wrong. Um, probably another six months or so before we completely develop the um, reclaim portion of the project and mm -hmm. um, have that permitted to inject water into the ground. And then that water, as is injected, it has some travel time um, to our wells, a four to six month travel time before it's withdrawn. Um, so uh, we will still rely upon um, some state water. We have water and storage in San Luis Reservoir. Um, there will be likely some allocation of additional water um, um, through the Delta. And then we'll make up the difference with our locally available groundwater and um, conservation. Um, um, uh, as we did um, several years ago, um, we went to the um, second most severe um, um, level of water conservation and were able to um, manage with our existing supplies. Okay, thank you. It just obviously it's a concern for all of us. Yes. Yeah, on, on that, Rob, Rob is exactly right. You know, uh, you know, the the IPR uh, project will not be online, uh, but next year, if we're continued in a extended drought, we would just rely uh, more heavily on our existing Morro Bay wells. As the mayor has pointed out, we're, our, al our annual allocation out of those wells is almost 600 acre feet. Uh, currently, the, the city uses about a little over 900 acre feet a year. So uh, again, uh, we still would be in, in good shape to, uh, in for the foreseeable future to continue to provide full water service to the city. Great. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm not sure if we, this is a recommendation, so I don't know if we need to take any action. Um, there's no further comments. I, let's move on to item B3 on the agenda. Um, again, Mr. Vice Chair, um, you might want to open it up for uh, if there's anybody uh, needing to make public comment. On this item? Okay, well, let's ask if there's anyone in the queue. Uh, no, sir, not at this time with their hands raised. Okay. And what we would like to hear is a, a motion from the board um, uh, uh, forwarding staff's recommendations, so should you choose, on to city council. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, um, we can certainly um, see if there's a motion. I would move staff recommendation. Okay. And a second? I'll second, I'll second it. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, there you are. There's our recommendation. Okay, moving the Thank agenda to the B3 um, capital budget. So, this is an item that we've talked about in the past and we're very interested in. So, who uh, who's up for this? I will start this one off. Um, and. I get to share my screen now, and I'm on a different computer, so I have to figure out how this actually um, works. And I... Well, that was a failure. You, you did have it up there for a moment, Rob. Let me try this again.
Okay. Looks good. Can everybody see the um, beginning slide that says 2021 proposed capital improvement plan? Yes. Okay. Um, so what we're looking for is this board to review the um, proposed 21-22 fiscal year capital improvement uh, plan budget and provide uh, staff with any comments that will be forwarded on to city council. Um, the purpose of the capital improvement plan um, is to allow the city to plan for capital projects and to ensure cost effectiveness and conformance with other existing um, plans and policies. It will it includes infrastructure projects over the next five years. It identifies both funded and unfunded projects. Unfunded projects can be funded by the city council in a future appropriation. Um, as you know, capital project construction and purchases represent one of the fundamental projects, uh, fundamental functions of uh, local government. Um, the CIP projects um, look to either extend the life, or replace or provide new infrastructure uh, for the city. And the city's construction projects of $15,000 or more are included in this um, capital budget. Um, we're proposing um, a little over $97 million um, for this next uh, fiscal year um, with 97% um, of the capital projects being funded in the enterprise fund um, category and about 3% in general fund. Uh, the lion's share of that may, is made up of the um, water reclamation facility project. We propose to spend about eight, almost $89 million on that um, project. Um, it is being funded through the EPA um, WIFIA program. And then um, I have other funding sources, but the other funding sources will be made up of the um, state of California's um, uh, state revolving fund, um, clean water, um, loan program, and then likely some cash reserves. In um, 1920, the city um, initiated a the five-year capital plan and including that in the budget. Um, last year, we did not make a lot of progress on the project due to resources availability and due to COVID. Um, one of the um, um, programs the city is currently tasked with is completing the um, ADA transition plan, which will identify ADA improvements and they'll be prioritized for um, completion. There are no um, projects um, relating back to um, uh, a question by Mr. Irwin a little bit earlier regarding sidewalk gaps um, proposed in this book. Uh, budget year until the transition plan is complete. Um, these are excerpts from the budget. Um, we'll go through them program by program. Um, we have um, our, for streets, our annual um, pavement management plan, proposing to carry forward and having a new budget allocation totaling um, a little over a million dollars. We're proposing to um, spend about $700,000 on pre-construction work for the Highway 141 interchange project, um, completing the um, um, PA and ED, the uh, project authorization and environmental determination, and then starting on um, PS&E, um, plan specifications and estimates, um, probably towards the end of this next fiscal year. Um, wayfinding signs carried over for $150,000. Um, we've added um, a little over $100,000 to the um, emergency storm drain repair uh, at near um, uh, just north of Elena between Juniper and Coa um, in an easement there. 
and working with um, a um, local civil firm and putting some plans together. Um, since we made it through the rains without um, much more erosion along there, we've decided to do a little bit more than um, do a emergency patch job on that and try to do some dumb thing there that's a little bit more resilient and um, has a longer life on it. Um, we're proposing to do one of the first storm drain projects identified in the Wadden Water Plan. Um, um, it has two phases to it. Um, it basically is a storm drain project to em eliminate and reduce the amount of flooding that occurs um, near the roundabout um, on Morro Bay Boulevard um, due to water coming off of Kern and rerouting that to its kind of its his, more historic drainage path that would drain to the bay. So installing some storm drain piping that accomplishes that. The rest of the um, uh, projects identified in the first five years of the one water plan for storm drain, as you can see, are unfunded. There is no um, um, funding source for that, uh, um, for those projects identified at this time. Um, we have a few small projects um, uh, identified for our uh, parks and creeks program. Um, uh, first being our Moore Creek restoration. Um, uh, we are not going to be able to receive a coastal permit for um, the project that was approved by FEMA, which in involves install it, doing some rock slope stabilization um, and um, hardening of that stream bank. Um, um, the Coastal Commission is adamantly against armoring um, that slope. Um, what we are looking at now is doing, um, we've added some split rail fencing there as a more permanent barrier um, between the bike path and that um, steep and creek bank. And then we'll be doing some um, willow cuttings along there, um, planting to um, biologically stabilize that slope. We have a couple of outer year projects, replacement of the um, cloisters, um, play equipment, and city park play, play equipment um, um, as those projects um, um, get closer, we'll be developing plans for those. Um, in our public facilities um, um, budget, um, probably the two major projects there are um, the Vets Hall Rehab, which uh, Matt has started on with the re-roof project. Don't want to do too much with the electrical upgrades until we have a good tight roof on there. Um, so we'll be doing um, electrical and audiovisual updates, get upgrades, getting ready for um, the reoccupation and having meetings from there sometime in the future. And then the Coleman Park um, restroom renovation which is um, proposed to be grant funded. We've started that first phase of that project with demo of the, um, the um, um, existing restroom building and we'll be submitting our um, grant application to state parks to fund the rest of that project um, uh, with um, 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 state money in conjunction with um, um, park in lieu money. Um, that grant is um, non-competitive. It's formulaic. So we're pretty sure we're going to get the formula money that as long as we can check all the boxes that we need to check um, to get that money in. Um, the other project there is installation of a couple of charging stations that is 40% um, grant funded through our local air district. Um, and those charging stations will be located on the Embarcadero, um, one near um, in the parking lot uh, near Gafco, and then one a little further north near the um, restroom um, by the harbor offices there. We also have an outer year project that is not funded. The um, um, surf stairs 
um, um, the stairs that used to exist at the end of Surf Street going down to the Embarcadero, those were removed because um, they were getting ready to fall down and they were a hazard. Um, putting those back is a little bit more complicated because we need a accessible path of travel um, there. So it'll be involve um, um, several switchbacks to traverse that slope. Um, in the one water, uh, in, excuse me, in the water CIP, um, we have several funded projects that come out of our um, um, one water plan that include the nutmeg pressure zone improvements. In fact, that will help the, um, Joe had mentioned the, um, the failure of the Vachon a booster station. One of the sub projects in that is to eliminate that Vachon booster um, and be able to deliver water from the nutmeg zone to the Elena zone without um, going through a pump station. We have enough gravity there and we're gonna let that work for us. We have um, rehabilitation of a couple of our tank sites, the, um, excuse me, the Blanca tanks and the um, uh, King Street tanks will be, um, um, we're nearly ready to put that, that project out to bid. Um, a couple of maintenance um, projects there, also the reskin of the, what is known as the desal building. <coughs> replacing the um, um, expendable portions of the RO um, unit, the uh, uh, membranes, and then modifications to um, the RO um, um, piping and tanks uh, at the RO site. The wastewater budget includes, of course, the um, largest project, um, the um, water reclamation facility project proposing to spend um, um, in excess of $88 million on that project. We also have two um, wastewater projects, um, the uh, Tascadero Road and Main Street sewer um, rehab project, and then um, uh, Beachcomber sewer line um, replacement project that, that uh, are pro proposed to be funded along with some upgrades to um, um, lift station two. Lift station two is located on the Embarcadero um, near the um, uh, Maritime Museum, just behind that is where lift station two is, is um, located. Um, um, Transit projects um, include um, the hub, transit hub improvements, replacement of trolley, automated um, fare collection system, and then um, a zero, em zero emission bus implementation plan getting started with our transi transition from um, uh, gasoline powered buses to electric buses. Inclusion, the city is proposing to spend a little over $97 million in this next fiscal year. Fiscal year. Um, enterprise funds make up about 97% of the CIP. Um, the general fund is proposed to spend about $3.3 million, mostly for street and storm drain improvement and repairs. Um, that concludes um, presentation of the CIP budget and happy to answer any questions along with the remaining, the rest of the staff and our city manager and public works director. Well, um, Rob, I've got a comment on uh, page 35 of the agenda packet, which is graph A4. Uh, of course, it shows where the, the money's coming from in our general fund. I, um, and I see that uh, sales and use tax is the third largest component of that. And I, I don't know what the thinking might be. I, you know, of course, we're all hoping that these wayfaring signs are going to help people stay downtown and spend money. And I'm just... I'd kind of like to hear just a comment about that. What 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 do you think about that? 
I think that's the goal of the Wayfaring Sign Program. I think, you know, that along with, um, you know, the visitor's use of um, available maps and apps that they have on, they carry in their pockets should help uh, help them find the resources that they need. And um, that'll be a good project to get done, um, that Wayfaring Sign um, Program. Okay, great. The, uh, yeah, Rob, I don't have anything to add to that, but I think AGP, I think you need to mute your, your mic. I think we're, we're hearing your conversation, sorry. It, no, yeah. sir, my mic is not on. Okay, I hear some, but something going on, somebody's background, sorry about that. Like I hear a video being played, somebody's something, I don't know what that is. Anyways, sorry, carry on. Okay, other comments on uh, Rob's uh, report? I have some. Does anyone else want to come in before me? Okay, John, why don't you go ahead? Okay, uh, Rob, uh, listing those unfunded requirements there on your, your proposal looks pretty good. Uh, you might want to think about adding some footnotes saying if something's not done or if something's not funded, particularly for current year requirements. Um, It'd probably go a long ways to addressing that unfunded requirement stuff I mentioned to you before, but just, yeah. just, just, and that's not going to change from year to year. You know, you've got it there, and and, and it can ride along with the with the project. Just so city council can't say, well, we didn't know. Um, the other thing that popped up for me was. Um, I didn't see any mention of for uh, scoping or estimating or whatever for decommission of the existing water treatment plant. I think it's probably within five years now that we're going to want to start putting together something to get rid of the that old plant. Is that right? Yes, uh, um, that was not included in the scope of uh, the existing contracts, um, nor was it included in the scope of the um, the Prop 218 um, vote that costs. Um, the um, thinking was that um, as we got closer to the the end and we secured these um, low interest loans that we may be able to leverage that money for the demolition of the plant. But it is a part of our um, coastal permit. We will need to um, deal with that. Um, I would suspect that we, in the next budget year, will we'll commence talking about that project. One of the thoughts which ran into my mind was, okay, so we get rid of the plant. What are the odds that we'll be required to do ecological restoration rather than uh, a redevelopment? Um, we already have our coastal development permit for the entire project that includes the, the demolition of the site. We Some of that area will be um, 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 not redeveloped. It'll be um, as open space area. Um, recreational open space area, especially the area subject to um, um, flooding um, there. So there is a small area of visitor serving commercial that will be available for redevelopment on that site. But um, um, for the most part, it will likely um, be um, um, restored as, as open area. Oh, and another thought ran through my brain as we were talking about fixing the Morrow Creek uh, erosion. Has there been any discussion of using sulfur piles to stabilize the slope there? You're, you're not armoring; all you're doing is keeping any more dirt from sloughing off. Do you think you do you think that would uh, fly past or would make it past the uh, Coastal Commission? Um, it would, especially if we bring those piles. Um, um, back from the slope a ways to protect any further erosion. Um, it, it could, um, we would, to fund that, we would not be able to use the restoration money from FEMA. We would likely need to, we would need to apply for a mitigation, uh, mitigation money. Um, so um, um, we will uh, look at that as an option. 
Do uh, you have a contact for, for your FEMA project? Yes, we do. Um, we coordinate through um, state OES on that. I can't remember who our contact is right at the moment. There is a process in FEMA to use alternative methods for uh, restoring or, uh, you know, to address the damages. And it doesn't necessarily, you know, number one thing is always you got to, you have to get regulatory approval for whatever you do. And yes. if, if, if what FEMA tried to shove down everybody's throat isn't going to work, there is an alternative process within FEMA itself for approving alternative projects. I will talk to OES and FEMA about that, see how we can um, bring that forward. Yeah, um, another, it's oh, also go it's ahead. covered within the uh, FEMA, uh, uh, what do you call it, agency, uh, agency uh, manual there for uh, 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 restoration. So there, okay. so if you have somebody who can look at it, if necessary, I can go make myself smart again and look for that. Are you talking about the community rating system? Or something? No, uh, what happens is if, if you have, there are certain things FEMA does not want to pay for normally, but it's gotten to the point now where you've got ecological concerns which force them to accept projects that they normally would not have accepted before. And it's 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 contentious, but it, it it's a way to get some of that FEMA funds in order to restore damage, which was caused by flooding or, or storms and stuff like that. Okay. Well, I just want to add one more thing. Okay, I just want to add one more thing about the demolition and um, of the um, uh, existing wastewater treatment plant. Um, we also will need to have a conversation with our partners on that property, the Cayuca Sanitary District through the um, um, our joint powers agreement meetings that will likely commence sometime in the near future to discuss how we unwind our joint venture that we have that we no longer need as a joint venture. The agreement did not anticipate um, this ever happening. Okay. Uh, Rob, when, when is Cayucas um, scheduled to come online with their new plan? Um, they're already running their existing plant and sending us their clean water. Um, Joe might know when they're going to transition to their ocean outfall. Yeah, that their hope is to uh, have uh, proven out their existing facility, their new facility, and uh, transition to the ocean outfall by the end of this month. So uh, they've been uh, sending us either partially treated or fully treated water for a good part of a month now. So uh, we're definitely seeing the impacts at the treatment plant. Uh, so uh, the treatment plant uh, is designed for a certain uh, uh, organic load, food load to the tra treatment plant. So uh, it's kind of in a transition period right now. So uh, staff's closely monitoring those impacts. I remember last month you told us that I think you were gonna shut down one of your digesters because there wasn't enough food. Uh, we, we actually did that. So uh, we have our three digesters. We have one of them uh, currently offline. And, uh, yeah, that's absolutely right. So, uh, you know, all our processes are designed for a certain amount of organic food load coming in. And uh, we just uh, essentially with Cayucas coming off, we reduced it by 25%. Okay. So um, judging from... The sewer odor at the end of Las Vegas at Main Street. I accepted the explanation and gave it to my wife that that's the Cayucas uh, sewer uh, having problems with uh, odors. Uh, is any odor I'm smelling down there actually our problem then? 
Uh, John, that's actually an excellent point. I will have staff go out there because, uh, yeah, the odors that we've always detected there were really from uh, the Cayucas line, uh, or that's what we always uh, had determined. So at this point in time, there should be no odors uh, in that intersection uh, out of that, uh, the Cayucas line because it's uh, essentially clean water, fully treated, coming to us. So uh, I will have... Uh, treatment plant staff go out there and investigate that. So there should be no orders at this point in time. And if there are, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's a very good uh, uh, indication that more than likely it is something that we need to take care of with, within the city system. Okay. You, what's, the, what's the intersection there? Excuse me. Las Vegas and Main Street. Okay. And I'll, I'll put in a, a work, a, you know, work request thing through the, or a maintenance request thing through the through the computer next time I smell it down there. Thanks, John. Good, good point. Excellent. Uh, do we uh, is there? Do we need to make a motion of, of any kind here? Um, no motion required. Just on. we um, have been taking notes on the uh, the board comments. Um, any um, any comments are appreciated. Okay, uh, are there, let's see if there's anyone in the public who has a comment. Um, is there anyone in the queue? No, sir, not at this time. Okay. Any other comments from our, our board members? Okay. Well, thank you, Rob, for a very detailed report. Oh, you're uh, very welcome. Let's move to item C on our agenda, which would be board members' concerns and interests and uh, I'd like to hear uh, from you uh, uh, John perhaps you can lead off to give everyone an example um, yeah let me let me get to that that item okay it just concerns an interest so it's uh, perhaps additional items beyond what you've already brought up here. Well, I had some interesting times. I was trying to reset my password on that uh, city website there and it got uh -huh. very confused when I tried to enter it. So uh, there may be a little bit of computer programmer work or whoever provides that thing there. They should okay. make clear that the that the password we're, we're doing is not for the city computer, but for that uh, contractor who's providing the uh, comment or the, the work request process okay. on the city website. All right. Um, all right. Thank you, John. Ian, how about uh, any comments, uh, concerns, interests? Ian, you're muted. Sorry about yeah. that. Okay, Ian, go ahead. Why don't you repeat what you were saying? We, we couldn't hear you. Yeah, so I just had a couple kind of quick questions. One about just the general budget. Um, if it's typical that the police is about 25% of the, the yearly budget, um, that would be one. And then the other question was um, regarding the repairs or the, the contractor breaking the sewer pipes and the main lines. Is that something that the city pays for or is that something the contractor um, takes care of? That's about it. Well, I, I can really jump in on the, uh, the contractor one real quick. So, uh, so typically, per, per the contract, if the, uh, the construction contractor and the command system breaks the line, uh, we assist and they take the lead and, and they fix the line, uh, which they've geared up to do. Uh, this was really the first day that they were doing excavating in the street and they were a little bit behind the eight ball and uh, city crews jumped in there and were able to, uh, to do the repair. Uh, we tracked all the city's time and equipment that we put into it, and we are back charging the contractor for those costs. 
Perfect. Okay. And, and to answer your question, Ian, um, <clears throat> typically public safety is 60 plus percent of a general fund budget. Um, what's different about ours and why that number may seem a little bit low if you combine police and fire is that uh, those, that graph doesn't account for the sales tax measures, measure E and Q, uh, which predominantly fund police and fire. So when you throw those into the mix, that number would jump up closer to what you would see in other cities. Okay. That's it for me. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, let's hear from uh, Ted. Why don't we go through the rest of our members? Yeah, just, uh, um, I mean, I'm, I'm new, obviously new. Uh, uh, this was my first meeting and my first uh, board packet review. And um, I'd just like to compliment staff on the well, comprehensive and uh, well-organized packet they put together. It really was, um, you know, in, for somebody that didn't, that knew virtually nothing about what was going on, um, it really put me uh, into the picture pretty quickly. So I'd like to, to thank um, Scott and Greg and the staff for the work they put into this. It was, uh, it's obviously a pretty big undertaking. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, good comment. It's, it's true. So that's excellent. Vice Chair Rogers, may I interject for a moment? Sure. Um, board Member Shady just reminded me, and I, I apologize, I neglected it. I, I neglected to mention this in my earlier comments, but um, what's typical is that new board members get uh, an in-person orientation um, and get the opportunity to meet with uh, myself and the division managers in the Public Works Department. So um, I will be reaching out to those three new members uh, about that. Um, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Thank you, I'd appreciate that. Ian, did you get an in-person interview when you came on board? I did, yeah. Huh. Ah, so mine would be six years late. Okay, thanks. <laughs> well, perhaps perhaps uh, John, John and I can participate in that too, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we would just have to be careful to make sure we uh, don't have uh, up to a quorum. Okay. Yeah. So we can do it separately. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, um, Lori, any any comments or observations or thoughts? Yeah, um, being new, I'm not completely clear what this part of the agenda is um, supposed to cover. Um, that said, I would definitely echo Ted's um, appreciation of the materials and how thorough um, those were very helpful. Um, I think I'll, yeah, I'll probably need to sort of reserve my comments as I get more familiar with um, the board practices and um, products. Let me think if there's anything else in particular. One thing is very general, but I'm a little curious about how um, staff and the board in general um, are working to factor in. I think I heard resiliency met, uh, mentioned, but uh, you know, climate change effects on these types of planning projects going to the future, obviously, that could potentially affect water and other resources, uh, from flood issues, et cetera. That's uh, great. Other than that, thank you. Just uh, uh, very good comment. Actually, I, I would just add because I'm this is I'm beginning my second year as a member of this board, and generally speaking, at this particular item is where we can bring up things that we are particularly interested in. And for example, I've been I've been pushing uh, for the wayfaring signs for quite some time, and now we're we're getting some progress on it. So. It's, it's a good opportunity to, to, to voice your concerns at this point. So this that would be my, my comment, Lori. Um, and so Steve, uh, also you have a chance to voice your interests or concerns or general comments. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, after having read the last two years of minutes and <laughs> getting, uh, so stay awake through them all. But by, wow. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but picking up what I can from there, uh, I, I learned, learned the most going through the budget package because it seemed to me to list 
list list most everything that, that that's apparently on on the uh, current and long range plan, or at least medium range plan, uh, with enough information that if I dug a little bit, I could figure out what's happening and where, and, and at a ballpark size of the project. So, so, so I really appreciate staff putting together that that no, no that 150 page uh, document with all of the details. Uh, that helped me. And then I've got a, um, you, you talked about special interest. Uh, I have a special interest with the uh, Highway 41, Highway 1 uh, intersection mm -hmm. issue and proposed change. And uh, don't, uh, is it too late to inject some, some well, to, to learn more about it and potentially inject some more input? Uh, I'm sure that, uh, that Rob can address that. He has been talking about that, and of course, we don't quite have the funding for it yet. But it's in the planning process, as far as I know. Okay. Rob, uh, do you have any comment? Are you still with us? Right? Yeah, yes, he is. Sure. As um, we move move forward and complete uh, the. Um, preliminary engineering documents and get the draft environmental document completed that will move forward to our public works advisory board and planning commission for um, their review um, along with the, the general public. I think the last time we brought the um, details of the roundabout, it has been several years. Uh, I'm thinking 2016 was the last time we had a presentation on, on a roundabout um, at that location. Um, not to say that it will be a roundabout, but it, the roundabout is the preferred alternative by um, the, through the, going through the Caltrans process. Uh, uh, is it out, out of line for me to 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 have some dialogue with the staff person working that? <laughs> uh, can I add, can I interject something, Rob? Sure. Uh, Caltrans has some strong preferences on how to approach the project. This is because my son works for Caltrans and I get to listen to him complain. But um, there are a lot of things that go into to those uh, uh, roundabouts. But uh, traffic safety is big. Pedestrian safety is big. Cost cost control is is big. And uh, so uh, I don't know, Rob. Would you be the one who should? Uh, bring Steve up, or would, do you think he should be talking to the, the Caltrans contact? So, so it is a city-sponsored project in the Caltrans right away. Um, they do have a project manager assigned to the project, but we are the the lead on the project. We just need to work with Caltrans to um, move the project forward. Um, I can, Steve, I can provide you with maybe before we get together some um, background information. Um, our consultant has, has gone through the two stages of um, intersection control evaluation on the project, uh, um, a series of traffic studies that is pretty digestible. Um, in fact, um, I believe they might, they're, they're on the website, but I'll send the entire board the link to those to refresh everybody's memory on, on the project. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Well, with that, um, I think it's time to move to our future agenda items. Uh, item D. And uh, here, here we can make suggestions on things we'd like to have in discussion in the future. So why don't we go around the group again? Anyone has... has uh, a comment or a thing that they'd like to discuss. Um, this is the time to talk about it. So, um, Ted, how about any, uh, I'll just give you a chance to voice your opinion or, or not. 
I don't have anything at this point, but I, I, I guess I would like to know the, the, the process. You know, if something comes up, who should we contact regarding putting something on the agenda, the board chair or one of the staff people? Okay. I can jump in and, and answer that. That would be me. You, you can reach out to me directly. Uh, my email address, if you haven't received an email from me yet, is just the first letter of my first name or my last name at morrowbayca.gov. Okay, good. Great, thank you. No, I, I'll just jump in real quick. A great question. Uh, so basically how it typically works, and, and it, we've gotten a little more refined in this approach, um, is that the city council establishes the goals for a two-year process or period of time, typically following a general election. Um, and then uh, they seek input when they do that from the various boards that uh, report to the city council or provide guidance to the city council, I should say. And then uh, council takes that input, input from the community, input from staff, and uh, re redo or revises their goals and, and the action items will help us achieve those goals. And then they send that information back to the, the boards for the relevant items. and. That really serves as the you know, general platform for the work that each of the committees uh, do for the city. Um, so that helps kind of narrow down the focus, if you will. Um, so we will be asking this board for input, I believe at the next PWAB meeting regarding city goals. And that would probably be a good time to, to really think ahead of time about what we want to do as a city. Um, we've heard from previous board members on PWAB that there's general interest in the capital improvement program. And obviously you got a, a preview of what we're gonna take the city council this year. Um, we have some new opportunities with new funding um, and um, potentially opportunities to do some assessments of our needs to really kind of bring that together. So this board would be uh, a primary focus for, for helping the city move forward with other capital projects and trying to prioritize. So, um, Needless to say, we'll be coming back to you to, to get your input about, you know, kind of where the city should be pointing itself and focusing on, and that'll help inform council's goals. Um, but if there are, are items that we want to, you want to explore further outside of that, the scope established by council, then typically, depending upon how extensive the work is, um, some, in some cases, we do need to take that to city council because there could be impacts on staff, you know, because we, we try to, uh, Try to do a lot of things here um, with the 30 folks we have in public works. So we have to be careful not to over inundate staff with new things um, if we can't, you know, get the existing things done. So hopefully that helps provide some context. And this is part of the discussion that Greg mentioned we'd be having with each of you as part of the, uh, you know, uh, orientation, if you will, for the board. And, Thank you, Scott. And, and the other thing which I read, I keep in mind when I reach out is that Janine had it in there, you gotta worry about Brown Act. So you gotta make sure you're not doing anything which resembles a corn. Right. Okay, uh, Ian, any uh, future agenda items that you'd like to suggest? Um, not really at this time. I mean, I think I, I agree with the, you know, water should be kind of the top of the list. Um, you know, so I think better ways to conserve water and save water for the city and maybe kind of always acting like we're in a drought, whether the governor has said we are or not, I think is smart going forward. So maybe that would be all I have right now. Okay, thank you. Um, Lori, any uh, thoughts on other things you might like to see us address? Um, no, I'm going to pass for now till I get a better uh, handle on it. I will backtrack just slightly um, after you explained the concerns and interests. Um, one of my areas of interest is um, stormwater and stormwater impacts. So I'd be curious to learn more about that as, as I go along. Okay. Uh, good source of information for stormwater is the one water plan. And uh, hopefully uh, Public Works will get you a, your own copy of that so you can be aware of what's what's included in, in the programs. Is that on the city website? 
I think it is. You know, you don't want to. You don't want the six hundred pages in a in on your computer screen. You're going to want to have a hard copy. A hard copy. It it, it, def, it it definitely is online, and you can find it online. And as John points out, it, it is a little bit harder to read some of the graphs and stuff. Uh, you know, as a hard copy, uh, we do have limited hard copies, but and uh, we do have one available right in the Public Works uh, office. But I'm sure we could uh, find one if you have a particular interest to uh, to take home. I also believe that there's one available in the library. In the library, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So we had uh, posted one over there. I believe that's still available, but it is available online. Uh, the actual text is fairly easy to read online, uh, but when it comes to the particular graphs, and if you just have a, a certain section that you'd like to see graphs emailed to you, that might be even easier that we could just print out uh, certain packets for you, and especially if you're just looking at the stormwater chapter that you have an, of, of interest. It might be a little bit easier to digest than uh, providing the, uh, the four-inch binder. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And uh, as far as I'm concerned on the future agenda items, um, I, since Jeff Heller was our liaison previously, and, and I understand uh, Red Davis, is, is that correct? Red's going to be our liaison this year with the city council. Um, Jeff you know, had commented on, of course, you know, why are we here? What is the, what is the purpose of this board? And, and that dovetails with what Scott was talking about. So I, I'm very keen on having a little bit more clarity on, you know, what, what can we do to help? And um, so I, I hope that that is on the agenda next month and uh, we'll look forward to it. So uh, without further ado, um, I think it's time for adjournment of the meeting. We need and to schedule I, the uh, the next meeting. It, it is uh, listed here on the on the on the agenda as Wednesday, June sixteenth. Uh, uh, typically, it's the third Wednesday, um, the sixteenth at five thirty, and it looks like it's going to be again as a Zoom meeting. Oh, um, a question: Is there any been discussions of when we start considering having in face to face? Uh, <laughs> Board meetings. Uh, great question, Mr. Wynn. Uh, we're we're contemplating that now, and uh, you know, it basically in, in uh, talking to our peers, it's all over the place. You know, some <laughs> some are you know wanting potentially going all in on in person, others hybrid, others staying Zoom. Um, the state is it's unclear where they're going to land. Um, so, great question. Don't have an answer for you yet. <laughs> I do enjoy being able to have these meetings while I'm in some place other than than more you know, away. But, you know, uh, that's all. <laughs> but the face to face is also very important. Understood. Well, it is. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll keep you posted if we work through the issues. Well, thank you all, and uh, thank you, Greg and uh, Scott and Joe and Damaris and Matt and uh, and Janine, of course. So we'll uh, tune in next uh, Wednesday, the June sixteenth, and we'll have. Um, further discussion. So thank you very much. I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.